Anyway, we proved we've got this uh, elephant thing. What else can we try and uh, identify? What have we got here? This is a, uh, it's an orange. That's an orange. The elephant's still in the shot. Go away, elephant. It always wants to get in on the action, that elephant. Let's try um, switching fruit. Let's have a, that's a Granny Smith. Very high uh, confidence on Granny Smith. Look at that, 99 point something. I think it was 100 then for a second. 100% now if it is a Granny Smith as we come close to the camera. So it, it's good at recognising not just apples, particular types of apples. And uh, presumably is it good at, say, yes, it's fairly good at the banana. Pretty certain that's a banana. It's amazing, really. It's picking this thing out amid the background of my hand and everything else, isn't it? So. Uh... some really basic code that just brings those GPIO pins high and low depending on which image it sees, so basically which category it is. So a square makes it stop, so we'll leave that there, and the triangle makes it go. And that's really just to test out my motors and check I've got everything wired correctly, and that basically the algorithm that recognises the images is giving me data, my if statements work, and then I can actually control the wheels. But we want to make something a bit more complicated than that. What I love about it is that it is kids, it is Silicon Valley engineers, it is retirees, it's people who aren't engineers at all. So this event is uh, an opportunity for our community to show their stuff. And these are small size and autonomous cars using a various different techniques and the history of car innovation has always been through racing. And on the, internet, uh, the only exception is we multiply the speed by 1.2 just because that sounds cool and at the beginning we hit the gas really hard. For these courses where you're trying to collect data, typically what we do with these guys is pretty much driving around the course collecting images and throttle and steering information. It's doing that 20 times per second as the car is traveling down the track. So with the extra power that the Jetson provides, you can actually bump that up, up to about 60 frames per second capturing that data. And that information is very crucial when you're making these tight turns on this track. There's what it's seeing. You can see whether it's uh, blocked or unblocked. Let's put that on the screen. So you can see when it thinks it's blocked, it will turn. When it isn't blocked like now, it won't turn. Put my foot in, oh, it'll turn. There we are. And uh, I'm impressed with this. Now clearly this could be trained to actually be more accurate in this particular area, but it does actually work. It actually is moving around, detecting what it can see. So, Here I am back again. And as you can see, it's working. The robot has learned how to move around across the whole surface of this table without falling off.